Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, dear viewers, uh, my name is Muhammad Iqbal and with me is my colleague, Mr. Kasmani Dola. A World Health Organization article released on 3rd February 2022 revealed that 20 million people were diagnosed with cancer in 2021. Half the cases led to fatalities, making cancer one of the leading causes of death worldwide. Yet, many cancers can be prevented or cured. Dr. Mariam is a medical scientist with 15 years of research experience in three different countries, Singapore, Malaysia, and Sweden. She has conducted extensive research in the field of cancer drug discovery. Having observed cancer in her close family and friends, uh, Dr. Mariam felt a strong need to translate and share the knowledge that she had gained from the laboratory with the public. Dr. Mariam continued to be a healthcare coach and had incorporated her own company, Wellness with Dr. Mariam Private Limited, to pursue her work in preventive lifestyle. In this special uh, monthly interview feature, Dr. Mariam will be sharing with us the various causes of cancer, she will be providing helpful tips on what we can do to prevent cancer based on a lifestyle approach. Fellow viewers, join us in giving Dr. Mariam a warm welcome. Dipersilakan sekarang, I would like to bring our guest for tonight. Uh, please uh, focus eh. Perketepikan semua WhatsApp you apa-apa dengar. It's not only, it's only just less than 45 minutes. You dengar betul-betul the causes tak punca dan how to prevent. These are the two two things that is very important. Dengar, it could save many life. Please welcome none other than our Dr. Mariam. Okay. Hi, Assalamualaikum. Thank you. <coughs> welcome uh, to the live today. Okay, and uh, hari ini pertama kali saya akan cuba membuat du dui bahasa eh. Uh, but mostly it will be in English but I will also translate some of the point and if there's anything you want me to repeat in, in Malay or repeat in English, you can just let me know. Alright, are we ready? Yes. Yes. Hari ini saya akan membincangkan tentang apakah uh, punca cancer dan bagaimana untuk kita mengelakkan daripada terkena cancer. Uh, what are the causes of cancer and how to prevent it. Okay, so I will just start with a bit about my background. Okay, so before this, uh, for my bachelor's, I was studying about the biochemical pathways in the body. Ini semua menunjukkan apa yang berlaku di dalam badan kita, uh, setiap proses di dalam badan kita. So, ini hanyalah muka surat pertama. This is only the first page. There's two page to it and <coughs> it is not complete. This was in, uh, how many years ago? This was uh, 15, 18 years ago. So I think by now they have discovered even more uh, pathway. So after I finished my bachelor in biochemistry, um, okay, then I continued uh, my master's. Uh, this is where I started my work on cancer. Okay, saya mula research tentang cancer daripada master's. Uh, saya buat drug discovery. For my master's, what I do is more on the chemical side. So I isolate um, chemicals from plants and I examine which, pl uh, which of the plant uh, chemicals can be used to make into uh, medicine um, and I was working with cancer cells lah at that time. I got started into cancer drug discovery. Okay so <clears throat> selepas saya saya buat research tentang uh, penemuan drug daripada tumbuh-tumbuhan kan uh, jadi saya tertanya-tanya. Okay I start asking myself. Okay so now I know how drugs are made. Then how do the drugs work in the body? So, bila kita dah makan ubat tu, macam mana ubat tu berfungsi dalam badan kita? So, this is where the next stage of my research. Okay, just now my master's was actually in Malaysia, University Putra Malaysia, uh, UPM Serdang. And for my PhD, I went to Sweden, Karolinska Institute. is one of the uh, top medical uh, institute in Europe. Alhamdulillah, I got the opportunity to go there. Okay, dan uh, di sana pula saya belajar tentang biochemical pathway di dalam, yang terlibat dalam cancer. So those uh, that I study eh, actually I can say it's just two genes. You can see the red circle, two genes out of the so many um, genes that are involved in the body. So the, the thing is that it's very complex, it's very complicated. Okay, cancer is not just one disease and it's not easy to 
find the medicine and it's not easy to target. Okay, let's look here. What are the causes of cancer? Okay, a lot of people say, um, they, they mention about, oh, the keturunan, okay, it's hereditary. But do you know that only 5 to 10% of the causes of cancer are hereditary? Cuma 5 hingga 10% adalah uh, berpunca daripada keturunan. Dan selebihnya, 90 hingga 95% adalah berpunca daripada persekitaran kita. Okay, so, 90 to 95% of the causes of cancer are uh, environmental factors. And I hope you can see the percentage on the slide. What are the, the percentages? Eh? You can see tobacco is the topmost causes uh, lung cancer. So that's about 33% of the causes. And then can you look at the next one? Excess weight and obesity. That accounts for 20%. Okay, 20% daripada punca uh, penyebab cancer adalah apabila kita uh, obese, obesity. Dan uh, 5% berpunca daripada diet. What, what is diet? Okay, later we'll go through this. Eh? And then the next 5% is lack of exercise. Means we need to have some form of exercise. Uh, then, <clears throat> okay, then we have a lot of other small factors. Uh, I won't go through in detail, but maybe I can go through like occupation. For example, if people are exposed to carcinogens. Carcinogen ini adalah benda-benda yang menyebabkan cancer. So, kalau dalam tempat kerja dia, me uh, melibatkan benda-benda yang menyebabkan cancer. So that's where you know they might they might get cancer. Then virus. Okay, virus contohnya uh, cervix cancer uh, salah satu punca dia adalah human papilloma virus. Kalau uh, kita dapat peluang untuk melalui screening uh, screening for HPV. Okay, bila kita dapat detect HPV tu uh, jadi doktor tu boleh membuat treatment supaya dia dapat elak daripada berlanjutan hingga ke konsen tahap lebih tinggi. Okay, family history. This is where just now kita tahu kan um, the uh, hereditary. Okay, then alcohol. Okay, this one mostly cause uh, liver, eh, liver cancer. Okay, then UV. UV mostly um, those cancer uh, that's due to UV would be the uh, melanoma. Okay, cancer kulit. Dan ni kebanyakannya di negara-negara barat kerana mereka suka berjemur. Ha, kalau dekat Asia ni kita selalu sembunyi kan daripada matahari. <laughs> That's why uh, kita disarankan kalau kita nak pergi uh, pantai kita gunakan apa sunscreen. This is to protect. Okay and and so on lah. There's a few more okay. Pollution and um, unknown factors. So 90-95% of the causes of cancer um, due to environmental factors. So don't you think there's a lot that we can do to avoid getting cancer? Okay, things that are in our control. So this one, maybe I won't go through so much uh, because just now I already went through what are the causes of cancer. Okay, uh, chemical, physical or biological. I already went through the list just now. And then uh, what happened is that all these things, it will target our genes in the body and then um, <clears throat> it will cause mutations. So in that way it's genetic but it's not hereditary. This is because of the environment, it causes mutation in the gene and then that mutation can start to drive cancer. Okay, so if you can see here on the right side is the picture of a uh, when the cancer cells, they cannot stop growing. They they don't have a break anymore uh, or the break is faulty lah. Macam katakan kalau you buat kereta, break you tak, tak berfungsi kan. So macam dia laju je. So sama macam cancer cell. Bila dia dah ada mutation, dia punya sel akan grow eh. Uh, dia akan uh, membiak dengan laju uh, macam kereta tak ada break. That's where the, the cancer, the tumor form and then it can become cancer if it spread to other parts of the body. So this is my favorite topic actually. Uh, the hidden toxins. Why is this my favorite topic? Because these are the things that uh, we can take the effort to avoid exposing ourselves to this thing. And what are the hidden toxins at home? You think about the, the first one, for example, perfume. Uh, perfume or if you look at ingredient, if it say fragrances, there's a lot of things that they put as fragrances that we don't know what is it. Uh, so there's a paper that already went out there. Eh? Uh, it's a scientifically researched. Bila uh, fragrances can actually cause disruption in your hormone. 
So when it say that making people ill does not necessarily mean cancer, it can also mean other things. So orang kata, oh but then takkanlah kita tak nak pakai perfume kan? You can try to look for something natural, natural perfume. These are the things that I, I just let you know and then you decide for yourself if this is something that you can do away with ataupun something that you can avoid or find a replacement like using natural uh, natural fragrances. Okay, then the second one, air freshness. Okay, do you know that air freshness, using air freshness in the house is equivalent to smoking 20 cigarettes a day. Um, this one, I tak nak tunjuk lah gambar brand dia but then generally it's the same as above perfume because air freshness use a lot of um fragrances and then they have the aerosols and the other uh, chemicals in the air freshness okay then there's also like other com consumer products this one actually is the sabun sabun you know all the soaps detergent it's exactly the same culprit is the fragrances so you can see a lot of things um is due to fragrances eh? uh, childhood cancer there's more evidence more evidence of child cancer that point to uh, chemical exposure Hand sanitizer, um, hand sanitizer pun, Chanet cakap eh, is a bit hard because we need to use hand sanitizer now kan. So, um, that sometimes in the newspaper, they will let you know which sanitizer are being recalled. Yang mana uh, sanitizer ditarik balik. So, always keep on look out on this. Vehicles that we should look out for. For example, triclosan. If you find triclosan as ingredient in the hand sanitizer, then don't get that. Don't get that hand sanitizer. So, from those list of ingredients, you can avoid some some things yourself lah. So, memang kalau kita nak avoid, memang kena rajin baca ingredient list. Uh, I can say myself, when I go to the shopping mall, eh, I spend about two hours <laughs> reading the ingredients. But then now, because dah, dah lama, right? So, I, I know which are the products I will go to. Uh, okay, so fabric softener. We like, right, fabric softener. It, it makes our fabric... Uh, wangi, make it uh, smell nice and it makes it soft. But then it is one of the uh, is the number one cause of indoor air pollution. Why is this so? Okay, think about it. If you already have the chemical, uh, those aerosols and the um, hormone disruptors in the softener, firstly when you wash, when you're washing you're exposed to it by your hand. And then when you dry it outside, okay, um, if it's outside the home, you still get the air coming into the home, right? So you get it through your nose. And then after that is dry, dah kering, you lipat, you letak dalam mana? Dalam almari, dalam bilik kan? So when you're sleeping at night, you're getting the <coughs> this aerosols continuously released in your home, in your bedroom. And then somehow you sleep on it. And it's through your skin, it's through your nose. That's why it's one of the uh, number one cause of the air pollution. This one is just to show you lah. And then scented candles, maybe kat sini kita tak banyak pakai but uh, if you're using scented candles, you can also take note that it release million of particles in your home, uh, not just the fragrance but also um, the wax and then you know dia punya yang apa, wig eh, they call it the wig yang kat tengah-tengah tu. Bila you bakar kan, dia keluarkan hitam-hitam kan asap. So all that you are breathing in that thing. Okay, then hidden toxin number two, personal care products. Uh, this one just now I've, I've mentioned about the um, hand sanitizer. There are some, uh, there's a list of things that you can look at ingredients to avoid, right? Then, um, okay, so the other one is makeup. There are some makeup that, that have asbestos. Okay, so asbestos is one of the things that are cancer causing lah. Uh, but slowly, I think, um, you know, uh, governing body, like, for example, in US, they have FDA, um, and then in, in in Malaysia, in Singapore, Indonesia, each of our country have this kind of bodies. So, they always screen for the ingredients in um, products before they import into Singapore or in your own country or before they allow some companies to release. So, um, you can try and follow the websites of this kind of organization in your country so that you can get updated. Uh, Kalau Singapore is called HSA, Health Sciences Authority. Uh, Kalau Malaysia, not very sure. Jadi kalau siapa yang tahu, maybe you can, you can comment lah kan kat Malaysia. Okay, then how do all these different things, right? Just now we, we, we see there's a lot of 
uh, different causes um, of cancer, one of the way that they disrupt your uh, how how it leads to cancer is that is they disrupt your genes. And how do they disrupt your genes? One of the way is through the formation of free radical. Okay, so free radical. Um, me maybe I won't go into detail lah because this one is quite. Uh, I mean, it can be quite in detail, <laughs> but I'm just showing that maybe people might be wondering why so many different things. I know, macam banyak sangat benda. Macam mana semua benda tu boleh menyebabkan cancer? So, one of the way is formation of free radicals. So, why do I want to mention free radicals? Okay, because um, this is one of the common pathway and it can affect a lot of organs in your body. Sorry, how we can quench the free radicals, macam mana kita nak membunuh free radicals adalah dengan memakai antioksidan dan macam dari mana kita dapat antioksidan adalah daripada buah-buahan dan sayur-sayuran. So maybe this one at the end eh, I will go go through that in, in more detail. So this one the hidden toxin number three, preservative. Okay, why do I want to mention preservative? Do you remember just now when we talk about the causes of cancer? Uh, 5% is from diet, partly is from preservative um, and also uh, other things that are not healthy lah. For example, if you like to barbecue, uh, you know, the soot. For example, kita suka makan sate kan? Uh, so, okay, jangan, bukan kata tak boleh makan sate, tapi uh, jangan makan sate hari-hari, contohnya. Don't eat the same thing every day. If you like to eat barbecue stuff, maybe once a month, it's okay. Or if you eat something barbecue, you know, oh, okay, you remember about the free radical. So, after that, you you eat you know, when you eat, you, when you buy satay, there's always the cucumber, timun. Uh, there's always the bawang. So, eat those. Jangan makan satay dia je. Jangan makan dia punya uh, apa, nasi empit je, habis tak makan sayur dia. Uh, you need the sayur. You need the veggie because all those, that the veggie will clean out all your uh, free radicals. Okay. Okay, then the um, hidden toxin number three, the preservative. Processed food use a lot of preservative kan? So it's not just um, harmful to the body in the sense that uh, if you want to avoid cancer, but it can affect other things. For example, they even suspect other things like autism can be caused by preservative. This one is still uh, in research. Lah. So that's why it's a question mark. Could processed food explain the autism in the rice? They found one one preservative that, that is linked to autism already. Uh, so ni masih dalam research, lah. but it's just good for us to get to know. Okay, so um, cancer care. All right, so this one I, I just want to share lah uh, that uh, when I do introduction talks like this in public, okay, I do a lot of free talks. You can even go to my YouTube channel. I do a lot of free talk. But then if you want to go into detail, uh, I also have a course uh, that I do collaboration with other experts like cancer exercise specialists and I also uh, collaborate together with a dietitian who is cancer patients for eight years and they're very established. So we form together uh, this course. If you know someone who has cancer and who's recovering, uh, then this is part of, uh, you know, the, the cancer care, the things that maybe, you know, they don't have time to tell you at the hospital. But these are things that at the site you need to do, like for example, stress relief, um, you know, identifying the carcinogen, then how you want to avoid, because you want to avoid a relapse. You know, that's the important thing also. After you recover, orang yang dah baik daripada cancer ni, dia pun nak avoid relapse. So that's where you need to identify and then you avoid them. So that you can avoid as much as possible the 95% that can cause cancer in your environment. You try to avoid those. And then after that, there's other things like managing the side effect and then how to release tension, uh, pain relief, and then to help the person to sleep better. So that's part of the cancer care course. And then it's like this. So other than that, I also uh, developed another course because uh, not everybody have cancer, kan? Uh, so Alhamdulillah lah. I mean, bila kita sehat, uh, kita nak kekalkan kesihatan kita. So kita kena tahu apakah yang penting. Apakah yang penting untuk kita um, fikirkan untuk kita kekalkan dalam uh, kesihatan kita. So I go into this eight components of wellness because it's not just food. It's not just about the things you use, like the detergent, but it's a lot of things like our mental health. Uh, there's also research being done to uh, to study what is the link between stress and cancer. 
Okay, as far as I know, um, uh, the one that my cancer exercise specialist, eh, he's part of the research. He he study that orang yang stress, people who are stressed, and they are recovering from cancer, it's more difficult for them to recover. Um, jadi that's why um, kita kita try avoid lah. Dan stress ni uh, kalau katakan bukan sebab cancer pun, stress ni dia menyebabkan kita punya mental kan, mental health. So anyway, it's good for our overall health. So this is where I uh, I went into a health coach uh, course to develop this this uh, this other aspect. So it's not just uh, trying to recover from cancer, but also trying to maintain our overall health. So this is where I go into the eight components of wellness. Next slide, please. Okay, so the contact. Um, if you want to get to know more, I'm on social media. Yang kat TikTok dah kenal I kat TikTok, right? I'm also on YouTube. You can find on my profile. Ada my YouTube channel. My Instagram tu uh, tak, tak lah sangat. Uh, but then I also have Facebook where I do some blog on Facebook. And you can also reach me by email lah. Uh, wellnesswithdrmariam at gmail.com. Okay, so with that, uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. 